Hi friends, welcome to my channel. My name's Fiddle. Today we're going to be making a miniature foot-powered toy truck. I really wanted to make it a pedal car, but I had a few problems with the design. So it's just a little foot-powered one where you know, kick your little feet inside. I really would like to try it again to make it a pedal car, but I don't have any more of the thread spools that I used as tires. This piece came about from a Facebook group that I'm a part of. They host a challenge every month where they give you a list of random materials and you go out and source them and then make a miniature with most or all of the parts. For this month's challenge, I had almost everything on the list, so I decided to join in. I love seeing all the different things that people come up with for the challenges. Before we get started, don't forget to check the link in the description. That'll take you to the scavenger hunt where you can find the list of materials and the free principal pattern that you'll need to make this for yourself. Okay, let's get started. The first thing we have to do is cut out the pattern. Because our pieces are small, it's a really good idea to start with cutting the inside pieces out first, like the doors, the windshield, and the spaces on the hood. And the pattern I'm cutting is different from the pattern that you have up in the corner, and it's also different from the one that I posted when I initially posted the scavenger hunt. I had to change a few things because when I went back and tried to make the pattern after fixing it, I made the hood too small. But I did fix that and I also reshaped the nose of the hood too. Before we move on to the next step, it's a good idea to trace your pattern onto another piece of paper so that way you have your extra door and your side panel. Now that we've got our pattern, we can glue it to our chipboard. I used a cheese it box because one of the challenge items is food packaging. And this is a lot easier to cut out of chipboard than it would be wood. Although I did consider baking pan aluminum, I wasn't too sure about how to connect the pieces together if I went that way. But I think it really would be a good idea. Maybe I'll figure it out someday and try again. I did a little bit of an experiment with this project and the fact that usually I sand down the chipboard if it has any type of paint on it. This time I wanted to see what the difference would be if I left it on. I will say that it made it to where I could glue the pattern pieces down and pull it off later a lot easier. Had it been plain chipboard, I would have just traced the pattern onto it and then cut it out. Once you have all your pieces glued down, go ahead and cut them out. And remember, start with the inside cutouts first, so that way you still keep the integrity of a cardboard. Once you have all your pieces cut out, grab the pattern for the body floorboard. And a few chopsticks. They are another one of the challenge items. We're going to make the framework for the bottom of the truck. Start by measuring out two chopsticks the length of your pattern. Then cut one end of both sticks at a 45 degree angle. Now we need to measure two more sticks the width of our pattern. Then cut one of those chopsticks at a 45 degree angle on both ends. Lay your sticks out making a rectangle. Then measure the inside intersecting points on the last stick. This one we're going to cut differently. Instead of cutting it at a 45, we're just going to cut it a straight line across. Now we're ready to glue them together. I used a combination of Aileen's Tacky Glue and Super Glue. I figured out the best way to do it is to put a ring of glue around the outside edge and put the super glue in the center. This gives you the instant bond from the super glue and makes the cleanup easier because tacky glue is easier to wipe away than the super glue would be. And for the last one, glue it about an inch and a half away from the end. Set it aside to dry and we're going to start working on the body panels. There are a few pieces that we need to make some folds in before we can start assembling. Any of our pieces on our patterns that have the dotted lines need to be folded in that spot. I used a metal ball tool and a clear ruler, but you can also use a regular ruler and a dead ballpoint pen. Once you have all your creases made, grab the hood of the truck, add glue to the two tiny front tabs, then tuck and glue them under the front flap, I guess is what we'll call it. Then use clamps to hold it together until it's dry. And while we're waiting, we can move on to painting. I mixed up a gray color by mixing my metallic black with some white. You can use whatever color you would like, cover all pieces front and back, and you may have to do a few layers. And speaking of the paint on the chipboard, for this project I attempted to peel the paint layer off, and that didn't quite work for me. I noticed that the paint layer kept getting thicker as it was pulling more of the regular cardstock off, 
and that resulted in wavy, uneven pieces. With that in mind, your two best bets are either to sand the paint off, which creates a mess, or leave it on and just paint an extra layer or so over it. Also, leaving that layer of paint on helps keep your piece stiff and you won't get warping as bad. Another thing that helps is painting both sides at the same time. Once everything's had time to dry, we're going to install the windows. I went back and forth with myself a few times if I was even going to put the windows in because we are talking about a child's writing toy and I don't think they really would have had windows in them. So this part is completely optional. But if you do want to put windows in, draw an outline just a bit bigger than the opening of the window onto a piece of clear packaging and cut it out. You'll need four windows in all, one for the front, back, and each door. Speaking of the doors, make sure that you glue your windows on the inside of the door, not on the outside. I had to sit there and think about it for a minute before I glued mine on. Although I will suggest using a different type of glue. Using a white glue like this, these windows won't stick for very long. Best bet would be using E6000 or another multi-surface adhesive. And I just realized that I didn't label the grill or tell you that you needed two of these pieces. That's okay though. So all you need is a scrap piece the same size as your grill and color it black with a marker. That was unintended, sorry. I colored mine black with chalk pastels, but a marker is a better answer. Once you have it colored black, we can glue our grill together. Give it a few minutes to dry, and we're going to move right into gluing our pieces together. Starting with the grill and the floorboard, glue the grill closer to the end that has the opening on the floorboard. Set that aside to dry, and we're going to glue our doors on. Yours is a bit different, and I'm sorry about that. I ran out of materials and couldn't remake it with the new pattern. I think it'll look and function better with the tabs on the inside. What you need to do is poke the tabs from the door into the tab openings on the sidewall. Then glue the tabs on the inside. Open and close the door a few times to make sure that your creases are set. Now we can glue the sidewalls to the floorboard. Let it dry completely before moving on to the next step. Now we can glue on the inside dash. This piece goes on the inside along where the arrow is pointing. Set it aside to dry and we're going to glue the windshield and the hood together. Just like we did for the doors, poke the tabs through the holes. Add glue to the tabs and attach them to the windshield. If you need to, use some clampy clampies to hold it there until it dries. While we're waiting for the rest of the pieces to dry, we're going to move on to putting the seat together. The first two tabs we're going to glue together are the larger one and the smaller one next to it. Repeat the same process for the other side. The next two tabs we're going to glue together are the upper smaller ones and the bigger one in the back. Hold it together with some clamps and while we wait for it to dry, we can glue our windshield and our hood to the truck. I did use super glue on this part because there was nowhere to put any clamps to hold it together. Set it aside for now and our chair should be dry enough that we can upholster it. Clothing was another item on the challenge list, so I'm using an old t-shirt. Glue the fabric to the main surfaces first and get it smoothed out, then fold it over and glue it on the sides. Leave the tiny flap at the bottom uncovered and trim the fabric all the way around. Now we have a little bench seat and we can glue it in our truck. Add a bit of glue to the tiny tab I was talking about earlier and place it at the back opening of the hole in the floor.
Now that the seat's in, we can glue the back wall on. Add a dab of glue to the back of the seat and that'll give more of a surface area to glue the back wall to. We're going to move on to making the bed of the truck. First, we need to measure out four chopsticks the width of our bed. Next, we need to measure out six chopsticks and six smaller dowels the length of the bed from the back of the truck to the end. Once you have them cut and measured, we can start gluing them in place. We're going to start by gluing down three chopsticks along the two longer sides and up against the cab of the truck. I'm sorry it's taken me a minute to get this tutorial out. I keep losing my voice and have to stop working on it, so I've only been able to get a little done each day. That and I didn't realize how long of a tutorial this was going to be because we're just about running out of time and we're not done yet. So let's keep trucking along, pun intended. Next, glue down your skinny dowel sticks over top of your chopsticks. Make sure that you're going over your width chopstick too. We're going to stack these kind of like Lincoln logs. When you have your two skinny sticks laid down, add another chopstick up against the cab. Then repeat the process until you've built up the back of the truck. Look, we're getting somewhere. It's starting to look like a truck. I know yours still does not look the same as mine at this point, and I really am sorry about that. This project is all over the place, and I have no idea how that happened, but half my body is in the picture. Sorry about that, too. <laughs> anyway, this part is completely optional, but I wanted to cover up the gray in the bottom of the truck, so I decided to take my square dowels and cut some of them down to fit just right. Then glued them all in place. I'm not sure how many are in there, though. My guess would be about 15. I found more printer gears in my stash, and this one really reminded me of an engine, so I painted it black and I'm going to put it under the hood. And while we have the paint out, go ahead and paint the chopstick frame that we made earlier. When the engine was dry, I glued it in place with E6000. If you don't have a cluster stack of gears like this, you can always glue them together with E6000 and make an engine that way. I even found one that had a pulley attached to it that I considered turning into an alternator, but I didn't in the end. Set it aside to dry, and we're going to move on to making the headlights. Another one of the challenge items was dryer sheets, so I used one as a backing for the lights. You can use a regular piece of paper and color it yellow. I had to set mine aside because I used paint, so we'll come back to it later. But for now, we're going to move on to making the steering wheel. I used a laser cut gear for this, but if you don't have one, you could use a little button and it would look just as cute. 
And instead of pulling out all the paint stuff, I just colored it with a black marker to make it look a little more like a steering wheel. Now we can glue it in place. I glued mine right in the center of the dash. I thought that was more fitting for a toy truck. I also added a chopstick across the dash in mine because I had a gap between the windshield and the inside firewall type area. And with that, the inside of the truck is done. Let's move back to the outside and start working on the headlights again. You'll need your yellow paper from earlier and wall protector dots. They have sticker backs already, but I went ahead and glued them down just to make sure they would stay. Set them aside to dry, and we're going to move on to making the wheels. I was pretty excited about coming up with these. Another one of the challenge items was a thread spool, and I had always thought since I was a child that those looked like wagon wheels, and thought this was a perfect opportunity to use them. I used a handsaw to cut both ends off of two thread spools, and then painted them black. I also had the thought of using a skinny black rubber tube and wrap it around the outside edge to make it look like a rubber tire, but I just didn't have enough tubing. Maybe next time, but for now we're going to move on to giving the truck some detail. I grabbed chalk pastels in brown, blue, green, and just a smidge of red. While I was doing this, I was thinking about what areas of the truck would be dirtiest. Altogether, it took me about two hours to get it the way that I wanted. And a tip to help make the chalk pastels stay better is to use hairspray in between your layers. When you're satisfied with the way that it looks inside and out, it's time to glue the roof on. I did use a dab of super glue in the corners just to make sure that they stayed down. And while we have the glue out, let's go ahead and glue the body to the frame. And while that's drying, we can come back to the headlights. They should be dry enough now that we can cut them out and glue them in place. I really couldn't decide on the best spot to put them, and there for a while I thought about adding circles to the pattern to where you could put them there, but then I thought well maybe your dots would be different sized, so I decided against it, and it's completely up to you on where you put them. I even thought about putting them on the hood, but I finally decided just on the outside edges would work just fine. Now that the body and most of the truck is done, we're going to finish making the wheels. In order to make the wheels work, we're going to need a paper straw to act as a channel for the axles to go through. We're going to start by measuring and cutting the paper straw for both the front and back axles, just a smidge bigger than the frame itself. Now that we've got our straws cut, we can glue them on the bottom of the truck where you want your wheels to be. I used both super glue and tacky glue to glue mine on because I went ahead and kept working with it and needed the instant bond. I also painted the straws black later on but I didn't record it. Set it aside for now and we're going to move on to the axles and wheels. You'll need four flat round beads and two toothpicks. Your toothpicks should be just about the right size but double check and make sure that they fit through your paper tube and have enough space for both the beads on either end. Next, put a bead on the end of one of the toothpicks, then put your spool wheel on top of that. The trick is using the bead as a hubcap to hold your wheel on. Once you have it set straight, hold your toothpick and have super glue all around where the bead and your wheel meet. Then sprinkle some baking soda over top of it. Be sure to keep your fingers out of the way because it is an instant chemical bond and can burn or irritate your skin. Set this one aside and then repeat the same process for the other axle. Now we're going to glue the other hub caps onto the wheels. Yours may be different, but my thread spool tops were different shapes on the inside and on the outside where I had cut it off. And that made the tire shape different on either side. I had to keep in mind what direction I was gluing the hub cap on to make sure that both the wheels were going to be facing the same directions. Also, you'll want to keep the bead hole open. Make sure you don't get any glue in it. Baking soda, it doesn't matter because it'll help later, but if you get the super glue in there now, you might not be able to get it on the axle. And you can use a paintbrush to dust away any of the excess baking soda, but I would suggest an older paintbrush just in case there's a few places that the super glue is still wet. It could ruin the end of a good paintbrush. And because this is an instant bond, we're going to go ahead and keep moving and attach the wheels. Slide your axle through the paper tube, and then add your other wheel on the other side. Then add super glue through the bead hole and push it down in there with a toothpick. 
There's just one more thing left to do, and that is to add the door handles. I use teeny tiny glass barrel beads and super glue, but I would suggest something like E6000. I added a bit of dried up tea here and there to look like dirt. Give a test to the wheels, and with that, it brings us to the end of our tutorial. I hope this gives you some ideas for your next project. And speaking of the next project, we're going to be making a pumpkin patch, corn stalks, and a big scary tree to get us set up for fall. If you've made it this far, thank you for being here. And if you haven't already, click the like and subscribe button. Thank you, Ginger, and I'll see you next time.